Welcome back Arcadians, it's good to be back here in the museum doing another video. It's been a while, but we have been extremely busy organising stuff, picking stuff up and moving into a new space, a new venture is happening, so I'm going to show you all of that. I've been organising all my PCBs in this cupboard, which has been frustrating me for ages, so I've built some shelves in here and we're going to go and pick a few of those PCBs out from that haul that I picked up a couple of months ago test them in the jammer cab, see what they are, maybe get a gameplay out of one of them. D doesn't even fit in the machine, it's so big. Oh. All right, let's try a bit of hooking. See if I can win my way out of the game by doing this. <laughs> Don't you hate players like that? That is absolutely amazing. Try some, try, try a little bit, go on. You know you want it. <laughs> Welcome back Arcadians and it's great to be back doing another video. It's been such a while, we've been so busy. So I want to just get straight into this because we've got so much to catch up on. This is a new space I've currently moved into. It's the old pump house that Heber used to use for storing a lot of their equipment. And really this is a space for storing a lot of our machines, but also we are going to be trying out a new repair service here. So hopefully repair not only the museum's cabinets, but also yours, if you have any PCBs or CRT monitors you want repaired. Now, we don't have all of this space. We still share part of this pump house with Heber, but I feel it's got great potential and it's enough for what we need. Um, we can store all our CRTs in here, all our test equipment, and also I can start restoring the cabinets knowing that I can leave it overnight and return to it the next morning you know, and not have to worry about packing it away for the opening day. So I feel like it's got great potential, it's a great space. Uh, the museum definitely needs this. And I feel like the community wants this as well. I mean, there's plenty of people that need their PCBs repaired and their dirty old monitors. So hopefully, fingers crossed, this will be something to look forward to. Now what you see here guys is what I like to think is probably the biggest collection of Alka cabinets in the world. We have an Alka bootleg of Rally X called Roadrunner. This is probably the only cabinet known to exist. And then we have a Sega Gremlin Carnival distributed by Alka. And then we have the bootleg of Scramble at the end here, the little one called Bomber. Um, these are fantastic games ones that I remember fondly playing back in the day. <laughs> and that's why I want to represent them here at the Arcade Archive, because that's what we had here in the UK. But unfortunately, they're all in need of great attention. Uh, Roadrunner, although it does have an original PCB, the monitor needs replacing because it's been necked. And the Carnival is missing the PCB, but it does have original sound cards. So hopefully, um, this one won't take too much to get working. Now he says that, but nothing's ever that easy, is it? <laughs> um, but we will return to these cabinets, guys. But for now, let's head on into the museum and see what else I've been up to. So one of the jobs that's been on my list to do now for months is this cupboard, which is total chaos at the moment. <laughs> you can't find anything. And this is where we store all our cleaning products, all my painting and tool equipment that I use for restoring cabinets and PCBs, which I really want easy access to. So my first job is to get everything out of the cupboard and just see what space I've got to work with here. And it's amazing how much I've accumulated since I started the museum. And some things never ever come out as easy as they went in. I'm pretty sure this went in as one whole unit. 
don't know how I'm gonna do this. <laughs> I need two hands. Well, I managed to get that racking out eventually. I forgot all about, I had to dismantle it. <laughs> it didn't all go in one piece. So, but anyway, we got it out and it allowed me to start work on the framework for my shelving. So with some 2B2 and some ply, I started work. Really difficult to get some fixing into these walls because they're so old and so gnarly. Um, they feel like they're made of chalk, but it's just a really soft sandstone. It's really difficult to get a fix in into these walls. You know what it's like, guys. You know, you, you drill your hole, you put your plug in, and it just disappears uh, into some internal wall that seems to go on forever. Um, and then you try, you try and get another fix in, and then you end up just loads of holes everywhere. <laughs> And, and, and the wood's never level, it's never straight because the walls are all gnarly and they stick out everywhere. But I made good progress. Um, and you know, I'm no carpenter guys, I'm a masonry builder. You know, I build with stone, uh, bricks, I'm a structural engineer, so I do a lot of structural alterations to buildings involving masonry. So my carpentry skills are not the best. But at the end of the day, it's just a cupboard and it's probably only going to be me that's going to be going in this cupboard. But as long as it's strong and it's holding the games, that's all that's important to me. Overall, it took me two days and that was in between doing other jobs as well. And you know what? I'm really pleased with it. So time for a quick clean up and the really fun part, which was putting back my PCBs ready for us to pick a game to play. So the first lot of PCBs we're going to have a look at, guys, is this lot here. Oh, and it's heavy. <laughs> and they're all pretty much the same game. They're all Street Fighter bootleg PCBs. It wouldn't be a UK pickups video without a load of Street Fighter boards because really that is a snapshot of when this operator was working because this was the game that was most popular at the time. So a lot of operators were hacking these games and creating new versions like this one here, which is the Rainbow Edition. The Rainbow Edition is basically a hack of Street Fighter 2's Champion Edition, notable for modifying many gameplay aspects, the most notable being the ability to transform into other characters and being able to pull off special moves in mid-air. The graphics and the music are identical, to those in the original game aside from the title's logo, which is now rainbow coloured, which is where this hat gets its name from. But unfortunately, having tested the rainbow edition, it didn't work. I was absolutely gutted. I was so looking forward to playing that, that game because I'd never played it before. But you know what guys, we still have another 15 or so Street Fighter bootlegs here to get through. One of them has to work. It doesn't even fit in the machine, it's so big. Oh. Right guys, let's see if this game works. I really hope it does because whether it be a bootleg or an original board, I just want them all to work at the end of the day. And this is a big part of the UK arcade scene. Um, back in the late 80s, early 90s, with a lot of these fighting games that were starting to come into the arcades, I kind of felt a little bit intimidated, I must admit, because there were new kids on the block coming in and this was their game, had more buttons. It was like, oh my God, I'm only used to one button, which was fire or jump. Um, so, you know, it was a lot to take in, although we did have Defender, that did have a lot of, lot of buttons, but, you know, for its day, it was completely different. Uh, than anything else we'd seen before it. So, you know, for me, playing Street Fighter was always on the Super Nintendo at home where I could build my skills against my brother, <laughs> you know. But now this is in the arcade and hopefully we'll get a, a, a jammer cab with six buttons set up. Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, this would be absolutely fantastic and hopefully I can hone my skills in a little bit better and get some competitions going with you, Arcadians. But anyway, Let's see if it works. This is the most important thing. We need to see if it works first. And then I'm going to have to fight my way through this game using just three buttons. And I, I bet you they're the punch buttons. They're, they're bound to be. 
we've got a working game. Fantastic, guys. Oh, this is awesome. Look at this. Let's credit up. Street Fighter 2, World Warrior. And the music takes you straight. The music? Oh, this sounds a bit different, a bit more funky. <laughs> bit more bassy, bit more drum and bass going on there. It's cool though, I like it. Right, let's, let's play. See how I get on. India. I wanted to go to Japan. Right, what have you got? Kicks or punches? Oh, punches. <laughs> right, I'm, I'm, oh, look at the... Look at the distance he's got on those strikes. Right, let's try a bit of Hulkin. See if I can win my way out of the game by doing this. <laughs> Don't you hate players like that? Ah, he's got me. Look, it's down to the wire. Yes! On punches! <laughs> Yes, got one more round yet, it's not over yet. Come on. Oh yes, he's got one in early. He's ducking underneath me. Oh, come on. Yes. Yes, and another one. Yes, and a throw, he's got a throw, a bit of jiu-jitsu going on there. One more hit, yes! He's done it just on punches. Oh, win, fantastic. Now, we're not gonna go through the whole game, because <laughs> we've got other balls to check out as well. But I'm chuffed with that, really, really cool. So we will get round to testing all these guys, but we want really a proper <clears throat> six button jammer cab set up so we can play these games and then we go through the whole lot we'll have a street fighter a mortal combat day maybe get Neil down here as well and we can have a bit of a competition going so that is a definitely a future video street fighter mortal combat fighting video on a jammer cab that would be absolutely brilliant so we'll put them to one side for now and we'll come back to them another time Now my next game was a real surprise to find amongst all those PCBs. And in actual fact, we found two uh, boards of this game and it is Konami's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles released in 1987. Now this arcade game was a huge blockbuster hit in North America, becoming Konami's highest growing arcade game. Konami was unable to keep up with the high demand so they outsourced it to the US manufacturing company Dynamo Corp which I believe made most of the generic jammer cabs in North America. Right, before we test this out, guys, I just want to express that I'm not a huge fan of, of beat-em-ups. I'm really not. And there's a select few that I really do like because of the theme and because the overall gameplay is excellent. But other than that, I do find them a little bit repetitive after a while. And um, Turtles, I have to admit, is not a theme that, uh, that I enjoy let's say <laughs> i don't know i guess it's because of my my age my generation i wasn't really into this at school or anything like that i didn't grow up with teenage mutant turtles i grew up with bruce lee do you know what i mean a lot cooler um but not not turtles bashing nunchuckers around no it just didn't make any sense to me but anyway i know it's a huge fan base out there for this game and i know people when they come down here they would love to see this working. So let's try it on anyway. Let's see if it works. Because this is quite an expensive board, quite a hard to find board, especially the four player option. Um, this could be four player or two player, I'm not sure. We have a game, guys, we have a game. Here we go. <laughs> I suppose I'll have to give it a playthrough. <laughs> right, I'm going to pick, obviously, the guy with the nunchaku, because uh, for me, that is the best weapon. The size is quite good, actually, but um, nunchaku is my favourite. Let's see if he uh, can live up to Bruce Lee's 
methods of fighting. Right, so we've got jump. Oh, nice spinning nunchaku. Can you do any tricks with it? All right, we've got a jump kick. Oh, I like that. Reverse nunchaku from behind and a nice throw. It, it moves quite fast. Oh, we've got no sound all of a sudden. Oh, disappearing sound. So it's got a sound fault, unfortunately. That's a shame. That's going to make a huge difference to the game because everyone's going to want to hear the music. Oh, such a shame. We lost audio only a few minutes into the gameplay. And this happened on the other PCB as well. Oh, well, we'll have to return to this once we get the audio fixed. But what I did play, I actually quite enjoy. You know, there's a lot going on in the game. There's a lot of interactions uh, with the environment. I like the fact that you can defeat the enemies really quickly by slamming them into the walls. You can pick up traffic cones, parking meters, and exploding oil drums can be hit or damaged with attacks in order to help defeat the nearby enemies. Overall, it's a, it's a good game, and I can see why it was such a big hit. Right, so the next PCB I'm really excited about. I've been itching to test this for ages. One of my favorite superheroes, and it is... Spider-Man. Any Spider-Man fans out there? This is a superb beat-em-up where it zooms in and out of, of, the, of the playing area. Fantastic game. Let's just hope this works. Now looking at this board, it looks very familiar and that is because it is on Sega's 32-bit system hardware. Same hardware as we looked at in the other video for Sega's F1 exhaust note. Um, this board is in good condition, although it has had some work done to it. Uh, looking at this crystal here, looks like it's been replaced at some point. But hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, this is going to work. Fingers crossed, guys. We've got a working, amazing Spider-Man. Come on. Come on. <laughs> uh. Okay, no luck in that jammer cab. But I've got an idea. Let's see if this works. So I'm going to try it out in the vertical cabinet now because sometimes PCBs work differently in other cabinets. Don't ask me why, it's just the nature of the hobby. Um, but it'd be really cool to get this going. I have just cleaned the edge connector. I've reseated some of the ROMs. So maybe that will make a difference. Let's find out. It'd be amazing if it does. Nothing on the screen, so... It's not, oh. Oh we, have, oh, we have a Spider-Man. Oh, cool. Is it working? Yes. Looks promising, guys. It looks promising. Oh, oh, no. That's not good. So we've got some graphic glitches there. We've got music. We've got some speech. But we've got no game. That's a shame. Oh, this is such a shame it didn't work because I really wanted to do a playthrough from the museum. Um, and I've fallen in love with this game because I've been playing it at home on my jammer cab on my pie. And I just love the fact that you can choose from these really cool superheroes, Hawkeye, Submariner, and Black Cat, and of course Spider-Man. The game's brilliant. I've absolutely fallen in love with it. It's just a really cool beat-em-up. I love the sound effects, the music. Everything about it really takes you into that Marvel comic world of Spider-Man. And the surprising thing about the game is the way it zooms in and out. So it kind of turns into like a, uh, an action platform game, a little bit like Shinobi. And there's never a dull moment in this game. You feel like you're constantly moving through the game. Um, the, the enemies are really varied from sort of like... Uh, Fat ball guys, guys in suits, martial artists in tank tops. And you know, I just love the fact that Venom appears at, at different stages in the game. So, you know, he, he's always doing something completely different in, in engaging in the environment and throwing things at you. It's just a super cool game. And I can't recommend this enough, guys. Now we still have one more PCB to look at and this one looks really interesting. Now it may not look it because it is extremely filthy, 
but it's actually Galaxian hardware that looks like it's been hacked to bits. Throughout the early 80s, Galaxian hardware was commonly used in pirated arcade games. It was very easy to clone when compared to other titles, and as such, they could be mass produced easily. I have no experience with this hardware whatsoever, so I am extremely excited to see exactly what is on this board, what games they've hacked or what games they possibly could have added to this board. Oh wow, it's working. Oh my God, what's this? It's got a menu. Galaxian Super Galaxians, Galaxian Part X, Exodus. Wow, this is cool. Oh, it's, it's Galaxian's Fast Bullets. <laughs> Look at this. This is cool. It's Galaxian with the steroids. Look how fast I'm firing, taking out this whole wave so quickly. This is awesome. Oh, this is brilliant. I'm loving this. Oh, I can't believe it, guys. Only a few minutes into this game and I've lost the audio. Never mind, it's understandable. These games are 30 to 40 years old now and you know they might have been turned on in that time. So you're bound to encounter some problems when switching these on for the first time. But we will get these fixed and I definitely want to return to this Galaxian board and the Spider-Man board in a future video. And we've still got all these PCBs to get through as well. There's so many games here and there's so much content. It's just getting the time to do it. But that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. In the meantime, get yourself down the arcade archive because I would absolutely love to see you down here, play some games, get some competitions going and relive that nostalgia for these classic arcade games. But until then, take care and I'll see you in the next video. Oh my God. Oh, look at that. Look at that inside there, look. Look at that. Uh. Look, it's got the strawberry filling inside. Mm. Oh, this is gonna give me all the energy I need for Street Fighter. Mm. Probably a good, good advert for Waitrose, aren't I? <laughs> mm. Oh my God. I'm not going to eat my dinner when I get home. That is absolutely amazing. Try some. Try, try a little bit. Go on. You know you want it. <laughs>